guys, today I'm scrapbooking with the Heart at Races kit, which is the Scraptastic kit from October. I'm just showing you some of the embellishments that I have left, and this is the photo I'm going to be scrapbooking. It's from August. I usually scrapbook more recent pictures than this, but I didn't get around to doing this at the time, and I noticed that it had that beautiful shade of orange in it that also appears in this kit, so I thought this would be a good time to pull out that photo and scrapbook it. So um, I'm just going through the kit and picking out some of the papers that I think will really coordinate with this kit. I want to use this paper from Studio Calico from the Brighton Pier collection, um, but I'm not entirely sure how. I like the colors on it, um, and so I'm going to just kind of sit and stew on that idea. I'm just going to trim up my photo, leaving a bit of a white border using my Creative Memories trimmer. And uh, this photo is cut at 3 inches, 3.25 by 3. 0.25 and I'm just going to cut off this little chunk of the Chamel paper. This is uh, from the Chamel line from American Crafts. I'm going to cut off that little rectangle that sticks out of my scraps there. And here's where I just keep some sketches of some ideas of layouts that I want to do. I don't usually do this actually. I usually just scrapbook off the top of my head or else I use a sketch that someone else has made. Um, but I was feeling creative about a couple of weeks ago and wanted to scrapbook but I didn't actually have the energy to scrapbook so I just sat down with my iPad and drew out some sketches for some ideas of some layouts that I might want to do in the coming weeks. So that's what that was and I ended up Although I kind of turned to it for inspiration, I ended up not really using any of those sketches or layouts that I had kind of written down, um, but it, it kind of got me started anyways. So I cut off that chunk from the Chamel paper, and then this gray paper that I'm about to tear is from the Chickenity uh, Scrumptious collection, and then that uh, orange and pink big piece of paper that was already torn from another layout that I did with the orange band at the top. That's also from Chicken Itty from the Scrumptious Collection. And then what I'm cutting here is I'm just going to cut out this tab and it's just a portion of the uh, paper that came in the kit from the Notes and Things Collection from Crate Paper. So I'm just going to stick that in there. And this is pretty much how my layouts, how my layers are going to be and I'm, I'm kind of playing with the idea of using the other side of that paper as opposed to the pink side because I really like those kind of swipes of watercolored uh, colors across the other side of it. Um, but I found that that was actually too much of the orange and the pink does a good job of offsetting all of the oranges that are going to be in this layout. So I decided to go with that pink pattern instead, the pink and orange. Um, they are triangles. So now I'm going to use this piece of Chamel paper as my background and I like that it's a nice neutral background and then I just pulled that uh, die cut piece that I cut with my um, with my cameo for a couple of layouts ago and I used it as a stencil a couple of layouts ago and so it already has some blue ink on it and that was the cut file that came with the kit this month from Scraptastic. And so uh, now I just have a crafter's workshop template here that looks like um, sequin waste. And so I took the uh, ink pad that came in the kit as the extra goodie that you get if you uh, buy two kits in a row. And the color of that ink is uh, turquoise stone and it's from Prima, it's a chalk ink. And sometimes the Prima chalk inks do kind of fall apart. And I think the reason they do that is um, that they're just so juicy that it's hard to get the glue to stick the foam to the uh, plastic in the case that it comes in. And so uh, be on the, be ready for that to happen. Like I've had a couple of inks that that has happened to. And one time when I opened it, it actually fell right onto my layout and kind of ruined it a little bit. I had to kind of fix it up. That's in one of my process videos. I can't remember which one, but it was from an, a recent month. And so um, just be ready for that. If it's really, um, if it looks messy inside, then chances are the glue has let go and the ink pad has kind of moved around inside of the case. And that's a good sign that you need to be careful opening it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using, because I can't use the ink pad itself because it came just connected from its case. Um, I am, I'm just using a foam 
dabbing applicator and I think I got these at the dollar store I got them years and years ago for using with mixed media and it's it's like a q-tip on one end and then a foam square on the other end and I've never seen them again in a store since then so I'm not sure where would you where you would go about buying them the dollar store is sometimes hit or miss with what it uh, with the supplies that it, it that it sells so, but any like a makeup sponge or, or one of those applicator, uh, foam applicator tools from Ranger or whatever would work for applying ink um, if you can't apply it directly using the pad. And so I just uh, made those made those dots so that they are appearing on the edges of where my layout is going to go, where my layers are going to go. And now I'm just working from the top and, uh, and attaching everything from the top down until I get to this layer and then the glue isn't going to stick through the um, die cut there because the die cut kind of peels up off the page and I actually really love how it peels up off the page so I don't want to glue it down so that's why I just use my tiny attacher to staple it towards the center so that my layers will cover up the staples and I want to make sure that this that the layers are going to stick through that die cut so I just used my tiny attacher to staple the top layers to the bottom layers just so that they don't come uh, dislodged as I'm working on the layout so here are the print and cut files from Scraptastic this month and um, I'm just pulling off some of them that I think I might use I usually pull them off I don't usually store them like this um, for this long because they get a little bit too sticky to the pad to the uh, cutting mat and then they curl up the way that these have curled up but that's okay so I'm just taking the tab that says courageous and then the little chevron that says three because there's three people in the photo and um, courageous just for no particular reason um, yeah <laughs> and I'm just looking at some of the die cuts. These are die cuts from Chicken Itty, although this particular one with the bands of color is from Ormolu. Most of them are from Chick Chicken Itty. And I'm going to take this uh, gray frame and just disconnect it from its little pieces that came with it. And I'm going to use that to frame in the For, for Like Ever flare badge that came with the kit. And then I have that scribbly blue die cut uh, is one of the print and cuts from the This Life Noted kit this month. And I have some upholstery thread here. I do like to use upholstery thread when I'm when I'm not sewing on my layout, but I'm just putting bundles of thread on my layout. I like to use upholstery thread because it keeps a circular shape and makes like a nice, um, a nice design on the layout without um, having to. Like I find that when I use regular thread, it's just too messy and it goes in all different directions instead of staying nice and um, fluid looking. And plus, it it because it's thicker, it has a bit more emphasis to it. Like you you can notice it more. It doesn't get lost in the layout the way that thread does, the way that regular thread does. So that's upholstery thread by Coats. It's called Coats Extra Strong Upholstery Thread, and I have it in a couple of different shades. And that one is white. So now I'm just taking some more die cuts from the kit. The the yellowy mustard colored uh, label is from Chicken Nitty, and then the die cut on top of it that says I especially love this, the blue one, is from Ormolu. And I'm just attaching all of these die cuts to one another along with the flare badge and the thread and the frame. And now I'm going to, I just had to trim off the frame a little bit. There's a little bit of um, torn paper beside it from where it disconnected from its frame. And then I had a bit of glue showing, so I just took the time to uh, pull it off. And it was kind of sticking to the other glue that was underneath, so I just used my paper piercer to tear the glue away so that I could just pull it off. And I'm just using that blue thing is, is a tool for removing adhesive from a project. So now I've decided to place the Brighton Pier um, is it called Brighton Pier? It's Brighton something uh, from Studio from Studio Calico. Um, where is that paper? Yeah, it looks like it is called Brighton Pier. And I'm just putting it across the top and the bottom. And I decided to put the bottom, have the bottom piece be the piece with the design on it because it's it's heavier, so it has more weight, and I like it to go at the bottom. But then it looked way too bottom heavy and not 
I don't know, I wanted to um, stamp some more images to kind of be mimicking the image, the, those circular designs that are inside of each of those bands of color on the bottom. So I'm just going through my Scraptastic stamp sets. These are the um, stamp sets from the kits just from previous months. I did also look through my This Life Noted stamp sets from previous kits as well and I just picked out a couple of stamp sets that had some smallish circular-ish type of design. I think I picked out a potential star and I wasn't entirely sure which one I would end up using but I went with this sun shape that I'll show you in a second. There it is and that's from the Summer Nights kit which came sometime in the summer and I'm just using my VersaFine ink which is my favorite black ink to just uh, stamp partial images that's why I have that piece of scrap paper but up against the strip so that I can stamp off of the paper so it looks like an interrupted design uh, similar to the one that I cut at the bottom so when I cut the bottom one I did interrupt the design as I cut it and I did that on purpose and so now the top one is too heavy looking and the bottom one is too light looking <laughs> because the top one is a the one that I stamped is a solid pattern and the one that came printed on the paper has a lot of outlining kind of on it that makes it look a little bit lighter so I'm just going to switch them around so that the lighter one is on the top and the darker one is on the bottom so quite a bit of changing my mind here but that's the way she goes sometimes so I'm I'm pleased with how that is turning out now and now I'm just going to take this chevron with the number three on it and I put a piece of adhesive down the middle and then foam dots on either side of it so that it stands up from the page like little wings and now I just went back to my pegboard to grab my letter stickers that came with the kit and three beautiful sheets of letter stickers came with this kit so I definitely want to use these uh, for my title I'm just making sure that I have enough of these We Are Memory Keepers uh, alpha stickers to be able to spell out the word iced lemonade. And I do, so I'm going to go ahead and spell that out. I'm just using the grid on my work surface as a guide to make sure that my letters are lining up evenly. And now, as I'm spelling this out, I'm realizing that the word lemonade is awfully long, and I'm not sure if it's going to fit with the design that I have here, but I'm going to try it out anyways. My first impulse was that this word is too long, and it's really throwing off the overall design here, in that there's too much stuff going down in the bottom right-hand corner now. But then I thought, if I put the word Timmy's right underneath, um, and then find an at symbol, which I wish there were more at symbols in letter stickers and just in general in scrapbooking, um, in scrapbooking supplies. But I was pretty sure that I could find uh, an, amp, an at symbol in my wood veneers, and sure enough, I did. Those are some, I think they're from Studio Caligo, those wood veneers that I reached in. And then while I was at it, I thought, you know, to further ground this title and make it look like it's not accidentally being too long, which it sort of is accidentally being too long, I thought I would incorporate some other embellishments into the design of the of the title by adding those wood veneer people, those icon people. And so for the iced, I wanted the I to start on the photo, so I, I worked from the I to the D. And then for lemonade, I wanted it to end just a little bit in from the edge of the paper, so I'm working from the E backwards to the L. So uh, that's how I decide how I'm going to do that. Because even though I had it on my wax paper, sometimes when you replace your letter stickers on the layout they they end up being a little bit more close together or a little bit more far apart and I didn't care so much that the I and the L lined up so much as I cared that the E ended the, the last E and the word ended over there where it where it is right now so that's where I started and now I wanted the T and the Timmies to definitely land on that pink paper, that, that pink pattern paper that's behind it, and so I started with the T here and worked over. Just because I wanted it to be connected to the layout, I didn't want it to be floating. In this case, it would have been fine to be floating, but I just didn't want it to be floating. 
So now I'm feeling like there's too much space between the words iced and lemonade, and it doesn't, it, I don't like it, so, so I'm moving it up a little bit. So there we go. And now there's a more similar amount of spacing between the words iced and lemonade and between lemonade and Timmy's. And now I am just uh, looking for an ink that I'm going to color the, the at symbol with. So that is, the, that is one of my Stampin' Write markers and the color is called Starfruit and it's one of the in colors from recent years. I don't think that they still sell this color. can't remember what year it's from. It could be retired because it's an in color. And then it was looking a little green to me, so I just went over it with Daffodil Delight, which didn't make any difference, so I just thought, I don't know, get a bit more yellow ink into that wood and it might look a little bit less green. But once I put it next to the letter stickers, it didn't look green anymore. Like It's got a slight greeny hue to it, but so does the, the uh, font that spells lemonade. So again here, I'm just checking on potentially the back side. I mean, these are reversible, but I just wanted to do a quick swipe. And this is, uh, what color is this? Coastal Cabana that I'm using now. So the first one was Starfruit, which gives like a mustardy, greeny color, greeny yellow. And then this one is Coastal Cabana that gives like a bluish green kind of a color. Greeny blue, I guess. And um, I was going to, orig originally the design kind of that first appealed to me was boy girl girl because it would go kind of down on an angle but then that's not the same as they are in the photo so I decided to make it girl boy girl because it mimics the order that the people are in the photo. I was there but I was taking the picture so I'm not in the photo so I mean I could have done I, I'm actually out of girls, so those are my last two girl potty people that I have. Um, so I, I couldn't put myself in there even if I wanted to, but it would also look weird because the photo has a, two girls and a boy. Um, I need to find somebody who has boys who wants to trade with me because I've got a million boy icon people and no girls left. So. <laughs> uh, so then, that I didn't want those icon people to be the only things that were that shade of the of the greeny blue and I do have that shade elsewhere but it just looks slightly different when it's on wood veneer than it does when it's on paper so I decided to add some more stars there were some stars that came in the kit so the cork star and then two of the wood stars came in the kit but then just to add a variety of sizes I I dipped into my own stash for some different sized wood veneer stars and I just used the same ink to color them all in either that star fruit yellow or the coastal cabana blue. And because the die cut sticks up off the page so much, um, I wanted to just kind of make it stick. So I'm putting a tiny bit of glue under there just to just so that this star is not going to like float up in the air. If that die cut kind of lifts up off the page, I don't want it to do that. I want it to lay flat where the star is. And now I'm just going to put these stars in sort of randomish places around the flare badge because I'm considering the flare badge to be the main element, like the main embellishment on the page. I do like my layouts to have a embellishment that's sort of the the main embellishment, like one that has more interest or is different than the other ones, um, just to kind of draw your attention. And so for this one, it's the flare badge with the thread underneath of it. And so now I'm thinking about adding some stickers, maybe amongst my layers or maybe up here in the corner. I'm planning to do some journaling right here. So I took a sticker that has that mustard orange and the, or the mustard yellow and an orange color as well. And I'm just going to use my roller date stamp to stamp the date, which was August 21st. And I just used uh, one of the Amy Tan roller date stamps. It says uh, remember with a little flower beside it. I just double stamped that and I did use stays on because I um, because it's a slick surface and so then I scattered some stars there and I want to do my journaling around the stars and so I just took a quick picture of how the stars are so that I can uh, plan my journaling in such a way I want to line my journaling I'm using a 0.01 journaling 
pen uh, for the lines and then a 0.05 um, or 0 0.5, yeah, 0 0.1 and a 0 0.5 um, for the so I'm using 0.5, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm using 0.5 for the, for the writing and 0.1 for the lines. And I want my lines to be random, like some of them to be long and some of them to be short. And I want at least one of the lines to go into the dots that I have on the background paper. Again, this sort of connects my journaling to the rest of the layout, kind of like I did with the word Timmy's. I wanted it to overlap with that pattern paper so it wasn't floating. Floating is fine, but I just didn't want it to float in this case. Um, and again, with this journaling, I don't want it to float. I want it to be attached. So I didn't plan that very well, and I had to go back and take off the star in order to draw the second line there. And I have my journaling pre-written out on the back of my uh, ingredients form, my layout ingredients form, just so that I can... Um, you know, focus on getting it right. So I'm just showing you the, the markers. These are my micron pens, 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. I know I got totally mixed up there with whether it was 0.05 or 0.5. It's definitely 0 0.05, sorry. <laughs> So now I'm just, you know, adding some more lines. And again, they're random. Some of them are shorter and some of them are longer. And I'm not going too far ahead in terms of how many lines I'm writing at once because I don't want to have extra space at the end. I want just the right number of lines for the amount of journaling that I have. And I'm gluing those stars as I go along. And now I have another couple of lines. So the journaling says, oh, one of the best things about HCU Summer Soccer is going to Tim Hortons for ice lemonade after the games. If the kids wear their HCU Timbit jerseys, they get theirs free. Which was something we didn't know. We've been in soccer for four years now, I think. And uh, we didn't know that they got free ice lemonade if they uh, went to Tim Hortons after the game with their jersey on. So... We only got a chance to do it a couple of times because we learned that towards the end of the season. So we'll be taking advantage of that deal a lot next year, I think. So now I'm just gluing on those little icon people. And gluing on the, the little at symbol as well. And I'm just having a quick last look at it to make sure that there's no more finishing details. And I'm feeling like I need something else up by the journaling. And so I decide that maybe these asterisks might be good. So I'm cutting them down a little bit and I'm going to make them into a banner. So that it sort of gives uh, some closure to the journaling. It kind of marks the end of it. It's on there crooked, I'm going to fix it in a second. And then once I put that on there, then that top sticker seemed like it just wasn't have, didn't have enough emphasis or it kind of got lost in the background. So I tried outlining it with an orange pen. That still didn't do quite what I wanted. So I, I felt like there needed to be more orange up there at the top. Again, you know, you add something, then you gotta add something else to balance it off. So I was thinking about maybe punching a circle asterisk out of this and then I thought about maybe cutting a circle and I knew that that would be a disaster because I wouldn't be able to cut it very nicely. So then I decided to make this little tiny banner and then I thought that's not so nice. <laughs> so then I thought about maybe adding um, <laughs> those triangle stickers and then finally I found that there was another orange banner that I could use. I thought about covering the circle, the, the triangle with the other asterisk and then I thought no I'll put the second asterisk banner right down here. So those are both from the same sticker I just cut it into pieces and added banners to banner ends to it. And then I decided because I didn't like how that was overlapping with such similar colors underneath of it so that pattern paper from Bright and Pure was too similar to the sticker that was over top of it. So I just moved the sticker so that it was overlapping the other sticker instead of the Bright and Pure paper and that just looks better to me. 
it gives it a little bit but it gives both of those banners a little bit more emphasis and you can still see the stamp even though it is covered the, with the with the roller date stamp so here's a bit of a close up of uh, some of the some of the details in the layout there are some photos as well that you can check out at the end thanks so much for watching everybody i hope you guys have a really great scrappy week and i'm hoping to get another layout or two done this weekend because i've been doing a lot of christmas village crafting and um, i'm feeling a little bit like i've been neglecting my scrapbook room so i hope to come back with another layout pretty soon take care everybody and have a really great scrappy week. Mm -hmm.